off recording. Um, get a handful of things on the agenda. I've slightly tweaked the agenda from what we have previously, so we can talk a little bit about that. Um, but first off, um, you might notice new faces in the call. I've invited engineering Yen um, during this call where we were previously just PMX, PM and UX. We wanted more engineering input. Uh, engineering coincidentally has wanted to provide more input and to hear more about what we're doing. Uh, so this would be a good opportunity for us to stay in sync. Um, the only one of us in the design system group that is not here is Scott, since it is like, you know, middle of the morning for him, uh, middle of the night. So I'm probably going to try to figure out some sort of like APAC friendly TikTok schedule or something. I don't know what we'll do yet, but we'll make sure to keep his voice involved in this as well. All right. Um, Jumping into the agenda, the first thing that I've added to this is a roadmap review. Like um, We talk a lot about what we're doing today and what we have to do tomorrow, but we've not spent as much time talking about what's upcoming. And so I want to make sure that that stays a uh, front and center for us as we are continuing to like build out our team and our plans. Uh, so if you haven't seen it before, I've got a roadmap that is maintained in GitLab using the Epic roadmaps, and it shows some of what we've got ongoing. Um, so obviously we have been focused on Pajamas migration guides. Those are pretty well wrapped up. Um, so we're not focusing on those currently. Uh, we have been investing in migration to Tailwind. A lot of the color specific stuff that's central to this team is wrapped up. I think uh, IP and uh, Paul still have a few things to do there. Um, if you're not aware, we're working on design tokens right now, which is leading into dark mode. Uh, and then part of that is we're vendoring a uh, bootstrap view as well. So these couple of projects run through the end of this fiscal year through um, like January of 2025. Um, and we'll be looking to add some things beyond that in the coming weeks. Um, in fact, hopefully very soon. As Chris is talking now about our longer term strategy, getting buy in with our design leadership so that we can start planning out beyond just what we're doing immediately and start talking about 12 and 18 and 36 months where we really want to see our design system go long term. All right. Uh, any thoughts or questions about that? Anything that you think we should make sure to include in our list of things that we're considering for upcoming priorities? Where do you see a space for some of the requests that come in from teams, either um, bugs or extensions to the things the design system currently supports? Yeah, I would like to see those much more front and center to our process. Like we're in the middle of this huge effort right now that doesn't give us a lot of space for um, what much of anything else. Um, once these big projects wrap, I'd like to see us doing kind of a blend of long-term stuff and more reactive stuff. Um, but at the moment we were like, when we started this, we were so buried in reactive stuff. It was just like, no, we have to stop this so we can focus on this big project. And then hopefully we can find a better balance, um, once we're through all of this work. If, if I'm reading between the lines a little there, Jeff, are we, are we sort of saying anything new that comes in now, we're saying, no, hold off. We, we'll yeah. get to that once we've done this. Okay. Yep, exactly. So much of this is like taking the engine out of the car that I don't want to delay it at all. Like it, even as paper cuts is starting to look at some of this design token stuff, like chat is immediately running into, well, here's all the rough edge cases. And it's like, okay, like every single dev developer or designer that we add into the system is going to run into more and more edge cases. So we need to get this through and then we can return to, okay, now we can do new components. Now we can do new patterns and guides and documentation. But um, this thing that we're in at the minute is, Expensive and disruptive, so I want to get through it as quick as I can. Thank you, note taker Dan. All right. Um, so at this point, I'll stop sharing. 
if you have any other thoughts later, um, feel free to DM me, grab coffee chat time with me. I'm, I'm happy to talk about this stuff anytime. Uh, next up in our agenda, I wanted to talk through our active projects. This can be um, a little statusy, like stand up y, but just be able to hear like where we are right now and kind of if there's anything majorly blocking us that keep us move from moving forward. Um, so the two I've got on the list here are um, design tokens and dark mode. And Dan, I see you've got a handful of um, things to add here. Would you like to jump into your thoughts? I had no idea what this meet was going to be. So I just, oh, yeah, that's fair. Time. just, no. just in good. case I was going to be asked, asked something so that I didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't choke. Uh, happy to say them out loud or happy to have them as read only. I had no idea what this was going to be. Yeah, that's fair. Um, your question there about like the balance between iteration and moving forward is a good one. Um, I think we should follow up on that um, async especially as I'm hearing Chad get into the weeds on things and seeing the places that he's running into. Like, I don't know exactly what the right guidance is. Um, so I feel like we might need to get on the weeds on that one a little bit. Yeah. Does anyone else want to talk about that particular topic? I can grab some time with us later this morning for that. I feel like I might want to listen. I'm not sure I've got any talking points on that yet. Okay. Maybe. I'll grab some time with the two of you. Awesome. Well, I'm curious for this last question for the for the group. How's everyone feeling about progress on design tokens? I've heard good things. I've I've been impressed that I've managed to go away for for sixteen weeks and come back, and it's much further along than I thought it was going to be. Um, nice. I've not I've not managed to appreciate the photo confidence. Yet, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not you. It's GitLab. <laughs> <laughs> it has been awesome to see how quickly um, folks have been crushing through this epic with all the GitLab UI stuff. Yeah, I should post another updated like burn up chart because it's just been straight up and to the right, like perfect linear progress, which is very exciting. <clears throat> I guess a related question is how how do we feel about the ones that are left? Are they left because they're big and scary or are they just left because they're the ones that are left? One of some of the ones that I didn't have a workflow status on, I didn't even know what they were. Like they're not represented anywhere in pajamas or storybook that I could really find. Um, they might just be kind of internal components that are used to build other things. Um, so some of them probably just need a dev to look at them and say like, okay, we can close this or it's already done or it needs this. Um, Scott did a little bit of that early on. Um, but I think like another fresh look at the remaining stuff would be helpful. Um, I think there's one or two that still need some problem validation. Like we raised up carousel as one that's like, we don't need to do this because it's used once. There's a few others that have scant usage and it's not clear that it's worth the effort to tokenize it. Um, so that's again, probably somewhere where devs could take a look and say like, it's easy enough. We should go ahead and do it. Or like, oh no, this is a ton of work. We shouldn't do this for just three consumers. Yep. I feel like I asked, did I ask that question in the planning meeting before? Like, <laughs> I feel like I heard that answer before. So apologies for asking the same question twice, said Jeff. All good. All good. <clears throat> Yeah, one thing I am curious about on this topic is what do you all see as next for design tokens? Like getting them into pajamas was a big milestone for me, but close-ish to the end there. It's within sight. Um, what do we do after that? What are our next big steps? The rest of the tokens. What is What are the rest of the tokens? Oh, I... I spacing elevation and motion uh 
lots, lots of them. I anecdotally, Dan and I have discussed. We think spacing's bigger than these color ones mm -hmm. uh, because they're invisible, and uh, it's going to be a lot harder to detect and do accurately and define rules around. And it's uh, it's those are things that happen outside of components mostly. So I, I think keeping keeping going with tokens. Um, lots of them. Could you repeat this? So you said spacing, motion. What were some of those other yeah, animation? Well, well, I guess motion, animation, uh, elevation. Uh, there's a number of. Okay, there's probably a dozen different categories total, okay. and color is just one of them. So, that makes sense. It, it makes sense. Is there a list somewhere, Jeremy? I feel like I've seen a list somewhere, but I, I have no idea where. Uh, I don't know if we have an official list internally, do we, Dan? I don't think so. We we've we've got a list of things like well, I can I can go into my fig jam here and see if I've got. Um, boy, it might take me a minute to find, so it's not worth wasting your time here. But, uh, yeah, that we could we could pull together a list of things. We just haven't done that on an official capacity. But it sounds like there are a bunch of different categories of things that can be tokenized. And it's, uh, you know, uh, which one do we work on next? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, typography. How did I even forget typography? Massive, you know, typography, spacing. Yeah. Elevation, yeah. opacity. Cool. So lots, lots, lots. I got to follow up to. Typography least... would be great put those down somewhere so that we have probably new epics for all of those things. Would, would, would the design token replace any hard coded variable in CSS? Is that right? It certainly could at the like fullest extent of it. All of these things would be defined as um, what Dan and Jeremy have called them as like micro decisions. So rather than a designer needing to come in and say, okay, this should be this font at this size and this color. You just decide the context of the thing and then you have, okay, well, here are the definitions for it. Well, this is a, a status button. So, okay, it gets the status background color and it gets the status font and it gets the status font weight. Um, and that way the appearance of the system is defined in one place. And then it just kind of flows naturally to everything that tries to fit that role. Makes sense, thanks. I think another thing I'd like to see as well, which is maybe a bit outside of like, even the engineering and the, the design side of things is just education, right? Like educating mm. the rest of GitLab on, here's what they are, here's how you use them. Here's why you shouldn't use status background for something else that just needs to be green. Like that's, you know what I mean? Like having, having people know what they are and why they use them is going to fix so many of our issues. Yeah. Especially you know that, that last like. one you bring up, like, oh, I want this thing to be green. Status background is green. So therefore I'm going to use that. That's going to introduce a whole new class of problems. <laughs> Technically correct, but also totally wrong. <laughs> like right. the linters are not going to catch that. <laughs> But yeah, um, I don't know what that looks like or how we do that as a as a product group, but definitely something to think about. For sure, for sure. Any ideas how we would stop people from doing that? That seems like that's going to happen a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, linting can go some way of the way, can't go all of the way. Uh, maybe could we could have the uh, UX review. Maybe I don't know. There's, there's, there's going to be holes no matter what we do. So I think it's having getting the balance between having enough layers to catch these things and not adding so many layers that we slow everything else down as well. Um, and, and I think maybe that's where the education can help because if people know how to do it, we won't need as many. Uh, 
I was going to say physical barriers. They're not physical at all, but you get the <laughs> point, right? Metaphysical barriers. That's what we need. There we go. That's what, yeah. We can write an AI that'll do it. That's There we go. Let's get that. That's right. <laughs> yeah, this is the area that I think is most concerning to me. Um, we could do it with guidance and guarding. I think we might also have luck in getting folks to think about a better ideal future state so that folks are not living in a world where they're messing with tokens constantly, right? Can we get to a point where we have a few folks that are authoring components that are broadly used? And yeah, obviously we're owning the design system and some of those ones that are used by every team, but even within you know product analytics and all the planning groups, they're all gonna have specific components that meet their group's needs. And if we can get the few kind of champions there understanding how to do this correctly, we have a much smaller pool of people that we need to like continue educating and reinforcing our approaches. I like, I like calling them token addicts. That's fun. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else on the design tokens topic, or should we flip over to the the dark mode? Cool. Uh, well, Jeremy, how's things going in dark mode land? Yeah, going well. Uh, Sasha and I connected yesterday for a bit. We're going to connect right after this meeting. Um, just due to PTO, we haven't had any overlap in the last two weeks, so not a ton of progress in the last uh, few weeks. But um, we're kind of, uh, you know, it's been following the, the double diamond process, and I think we're mm -hmm. coming back in on on uh, closing the gap on a few things. So that's what we're going to discuss today. Cool. How are you feeling about um, being able to present this stuff to design leadership within the 17.3 milestone? I'll know more after I talk to Sasha, but uh, okay. probably pretty decent about it. Uh, again, what we're presenting is direction, not right. decisions, if that makes sense. Uh, so like conceptually, like this is where we're wanting to take it. Now we need more time to actually go through and identify how each you know component is going to work because right now it's just a handful of the components handful of pages so just to be clear on the scope yep that makes sense <clears throat> awesome and again the paper cuts team is looking um during this milestone at how they can help out with getting gitlab dark mode ready um, so you'll probably see a lot of discussions and questions for them. They're all going to be, um, coordinating in the F design tokens channel for a lot of that discussion. Um, so watch, watch for more here. I think in general, in specific, like we're going to be able to understand a lot better by the end of this milestone, specifically what we're going to need to do to actually get from here's the list of tokens. Here's the vision that we want. And here's the work that we have to do to actually realize it. For dark mode outside of the design tokens work, is there anything that we need from engineering that isn't being worked on right now? I'm not really sure what Scott's is and isn't doing. I think Scott has on his list everything that we've heard so far. So introducing a way to test out the design token power dark mode. Um, he's got some developer experience stuff in his queue to make sure that folks aren't like using CSS variables incorrectly in a way that'll just blow up. Um, those were all the things that I've heard of that we need. Um, Dan, what do you think though? Are there other um, areas that dev could be helping out here? I think there's some decisions that need to be made around some 
process, process type things that will affect design, engineering, or UX and engineering probably quite equally. For example, things like screenshots in MR as a requirement. Is it light mode and dark mode now? Is there like a primary between the two that we need to support? Should engineers be working in and designers be working in dark mode first? Should they, is it a compulsory step to check it? Like these kind of questions, I think are a joint engineering UX um, as a company, what, what we're gonna do. Um, but so... I sort of expect this bubbling that up your your chain and Chris bubbling up his chain, Jeff bubbling up his to try and um, figure it out. So you basically what's supporting dark mode as like a, a main feature means for GitLab, the, the company rather than GitLab, the product. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah I think I'm glad so. you brought that up. Yeah, there should be issues and whatnot. Mm -hmm. This is something we identified early on in our like dark mode needs. Uh, but it's yeah, heavy, heavy on the process. You know, what are what is the UI kit support? <clears throat> what are designers concepting in? What are we using for user testing uh, or usability testing? Like all of these process things, uh, <clears throat> visual regression, and you know, everywhere, like all of that. Uh, yeah, snapshots, it just massive, massive questions once it becomes an official support. But also scaling that when we consider high contrast mode or the potential for a dimmed theme and light theme and different navigation styles, it's just exponential. So uh, it's it's out there. Yeah, the exponential yeah. aspect of it is what has me concerned. I want to be careful of putting us on a path where, okay, you have to check light mode in cozy layout and light mode in condensed layout and dark mode in cozy. And then the accessibility and all, it becomes a combinatorics problem. We don't want 17 screenshots on every MR. Are those decisions blocking us at all at the minute? Or is that something we, we have time to, I guess, mull over? Got a week. <laughs> cool. Something worth thinking about as we go along, though. Um, yeah. Sorry, I had a totally random thought. That's a that's a thought for an issue, not a thought for this meeting. I I didn't see if it's in the agenda, but I'll. I'll um, link up the Epic for that's open for this stuff. So awesome. Thank you. I think once we're in a place to share direction, that will be uh, a bit of a catalyst to get like leadership support on ch you know, changing processes everywhere. Um, you know, sort of once we can share, okay, more concretely, here's what's coming. By the way, we're going to start building this, you know, in the next quarter. So we need to get your buy-in to, you know, we, we need to get your support to drive these uh, process changes from there. So that's about what I would expect to really start needing to push on. Okay, designers, engineers, here's how the coming of dark mode would change everything for you. And maybe ideally the mess that all that messaging is not entirely from this team. Okay, cool. All right. Um, coming up on time here, Sam, your last topic that you got here. Yeah, the majority of this uh, people can read through. The, the basic idea is we're starting to do all of the, the paperwork, I guess, for splitting the teams. We're moving some projects around. We're moving people around in, in work day. The ones that will probably affect you all is if you're tagging the team now, it's in a different place. It's not at manage foundations now. It's just app foundations. And then if you want to do specific teams, you can do foundations slash whatever that specific team is. Same for the engineering ones that existed. If you did manage foundations engineering, it's now foundations engineering. 
or foundations, design system, engineering, you, you, you should be able to auto-complete from there. Um, the Does this foundations include the other foundations groups? Paper shoots. Uh, no, uh, paper shoots are not included. Uh, no, I've, I've not touched any of the groups here right now, um, simply because I still haven't wrapped my head around the new org structure. I was talking about it with Jeff yesterday, and it's it's slightly different on product than it is on engineering. It's a bit confusing. Um, but potentially, yes, they will live in there eventually. Um, it's just a list of of people on a members list at the minute, so we can add and remove people as and, as and when we need. Um, other foundation teams at GitLab. Uh, not yet, but there will be. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I raised uh, that point up to the the folks that were signing off on this decision, Jeremy, and they were not concerned about that. Yeah, um, they did get me when they created the GitLab Foundation as well, yes. which is yes. which is a whole other thing <laughs> that, that exists that is not us as well. Um, yeah, the other thing as well, just while I've still got a bit of time, is there is a design system specific team tasks project, which is where we would house planning issues and things like that. Um, do we want to move that over? Sorry, move the planning issues over to there now for ones going forward, include the old ones, or how, how do we want to do that? I don't have much of an opinion. Um, as long as they're in the right place going forward, it's fine. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's a lot of folks looking at past planning issues, so. You might be reminiscing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, certainly we can move them over, but whatever. However you want to arrange it is fine by me. I will do whatever's easiest. Uh, Fantastic. Probably what I'll do. And we'll, Love we'll it. Go from there. Love it. Um, your, if you've got it bookmarked, your bookmark will be broken because it won't have manage in the URL anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but they do seem to that. redirect, but they fuss at me. Like, do the rex, redirects turn off at some point? Oh, I don't know. It might do. I've not yeah. checked. I'm just okay. assuming it's broken, uh, which <laughs> is generally a, a decent assumption. Fair. Um, Fair. But yeah. And last point, the members list has been updated. Click on that list. It should include everyone from this group. If you're not on there, speak to somebody who is on there and they can add you. Um, also, if I've accidentally added you personal ones, apologies, please swap it around. Uh, you search for any one of us and like five people pop up and it's like, okay, it's probably this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's that the UX on that list is not good. <laughs> apologies if anyone here made that. <laughs> Cool. Uh, well, we're at time. Uh, thank you all so much for uh, for joining today. Uh, if you have feedback on this uh, agenda or this process or your presence here, feel free to ping me or Sam and we'll iterate on it. Thanks all. See you later. <laughs>